In this session, I want to go a little bit deeper in defining some other terminology that you will encounter when we will continue with the course or when you will be looking into some projects. What I want to look at is to learn to teach you something more about the activity node, what is about the early start and early finish of an activity, the late start and finish of an activity, and what is slack or float. The activity node is in fact typically a rectangle which contains different information about the activity. Now the name of the activity can be there where we see it in the activity node here. The task ID or the name, it can be a letter, it can be a code. One of the elements that we use in our exercises, we use typically letters, but in reality, there can be a task name. That's not a problem at all. We look at the task duration. We look at the cost, uh, cost of task, cost center is there. We also look at the start and the finish times. Uh, on the top, we have the early start, early finish, late start and late finish. And we also find the slack and some other information that may be added to the node. So this is a typical node, activity node, but there can be other nodes with different information. And sometimes we can have that information also added in different places. But let's have a look at the early start and early finish times. Now, when we look at the critical path method that I described before, I mentioned that uh, we have what we call a forward pass and a backward pass. And basically those two elements are quite important because during the forward pass, we're looking at the activity and we look at them at their earliest start date. So it also means that we will find for every activity the earliest end date of an activity. Now the early start is the earliest moment in time an activity can start. It also means that all the predecessors have been completed before because the predecessor relation says that the successor activity can only start when all the predecessors have been completed. Now, the early finish time is the earliest an activity can finish when we consider the early start and the duration of the activity. Let's have a look at some small, simple calculation. Now, let's say for uh, the activity I'm considering, all the predecessors are finished on April 15th. April 15th in the evening, we stop with the work, so the successor can start the earliest on April 16th, the next day. And when we have a duration of three days, it will finish on April the 18th. Now, when you look at this, 16 plus three is 19, but if we would count the number of days, we have in fact April the 16th being the first day, April the six, uh, 17th sorry, is the second day, and then April the 18th is the 13th day. So here we see when we do the calculation, we have April the 16th plus three minus one. So it's the same thing if we want to calculate how many days there are between uh, two uh, dates, for example, between 16 and 18, we take 18 minus 16 plus one because there are three days between those two dates. Let's now like have a look at the late start and finish times. The same thing in the critical path method, we looked at the backward pass, and in the backward pass, we find in fact the late start and the late finish times of each activity. But what are they? What does it mean, the late finish and the late start time? The late finish time is the latest moment an activity must finish in order not to extend the project duration. So if an activity would finish later than the late finish time, it would have an immediate impact on the duration of the project. And that is not allowed. So the latest finish time is the latest time that I, an activity can finish without changing the end time of the project. 
based on this, we can calculate the late start. So from the late finish, I'm calculating back. I want to find the latest moment an activity can start with a doubt changing its late finish. And as a result, without changing the project duration. Now let's have a look at the successors. So all successors must not start later than April 15th. So the predecessor, the activity which is before this activity, they should not finish later than the day before, which is April the 14th. And with a duration of three days, it should not start later than April the 12th. So basically April the 12th for that activity is the late start time. Plus three minus one is April the 14th, which is the late finish time of that activity. And it's great because as long as that activity doesn't finish later than the April the 14th, the successor activity can still start on April the 15th. So basically that's the idea from early start, late start, early finish and late finish. But let's have a look at the definition of slack or float. When we look at early start, early finish, late start and early finish, we can calculate the slack or the float with a formula where I take latest start minus early start is latest finished minus early finish. And it's the time between those early and late times. Now, in case the early start is equal to the late start and the early finish is equal to the late finish, this means that the slack or float is equal to zero. When they are different, the slack is typically positive. It's possible in some cases that we have a negative slack, but that's too complex for the things we are studying at this moment. We will talk about that later, what happens when the slack has different values. Now the slack or the float gives us the flexibility an activity has. Now we can change the start and the finish times and duration without changing the end date of the project as long as we're using the slack or the float. And it's that flexibility which is very important because we like to have activities which have a fl flexibility, which have slack or float. Now, typically what happens sometimes is that people say, well, we have activities with a slack equal to zero without flexibility and defining the critical path as being slack equal to zero. That's not a good definition of the critical path. We will talk about that in the next video. We'll be talking about the critical path and the critical path method and how to identify the critical path. Remember, slack equals zero is not necessarily the indication that the activity is on the critical path. So that was it for early start, late start, early finish, late finish and slack and float. And we'll continue in the next video. Thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.